Hey everyone, welcome to Simming History, where we look at the history of architecture through the lens of the Sims. And today on Simming History, we're going to look at a type of vernacular architecture found in medieval Britain, the Hall House. Now, medieval Britain was an interesting period in where pretty much everyone lived communally. There were literally either landowners or land workers. And landowners owned the houses and land workers worked the land and then lived in those houses. So the farmer, the landowner, and his family would have lived in this house with their workers and their families. Can you imagine living with your co-workers and all of their families? I know I can't. So the whole house would have been typically a two-story structure. The center hall, for which it's named, would have been the two-story room. The roofing would have been either thatch or clay tile. It would have been thatch or clay tile so that the smoke from the open fire inside the hall could disperse through the roof because the ceiling would have been wide open. They also would have had these two large massive windows in the hall on either side, double story, that would have also have acted as a means for the smoke to escape. And they could have done so because they weren't actually windows. Now, I know I'm adding windows in the video, but this is the closest thing Sims has. The windows for the Hall House really would have just been large openings with these huge vertical slats in them. And then at night, they would have been shuttered and bolted uh, to keep out the, the danger and the scary and the evil. But otherwise, those windows would have just been completely wide open. And those windows would have been set in a wood timber wall. Uh, the construction method that's used in the Hall House specifically was something called Cruck Framing. And you can see me sort of trying to create it with the Sims wallpaper here. Cruck Framing was naturally curved wood uh, timbers that went from the corner of the wall up into the center point to support the center ridge beam for the roof. And that was a natural curve, it's just the curve that occurred in that tree. And in between the crook framing, it would have been filled out with other timber framing. And then in between that timber framing, they would have used something called wattle and daub. Now today we use of course like wallboard or gypsum wallboard uh, to finish out our walls. Before that we would have used something called lath and plaster. Lath being these little thin strips of wood that were spaced out with like a half inch to an inch space between them attached to the wood framing and then plaster would have been applied over that and it would have oozed between the gaps of the lath and would have sort of grabbed on to the back of the lath and that's what kept the plaster up. Well back before lath and plaster they used wattle and daub. Wattle is mats of woven like branches or reeds that would have been inserted in between these panels and then daub would have been applied to that and daub was sort of really early plaster. It was made up of mud and soil and clay uh, and sand, animal dung, and straw. Now, wattle and daub is actually from the Neolithic era, so the earliest of early man. And it was used for about 6,000 years before slowly sort of falling out of favor. Personally, I think the animal dung may have had something to do with that, but I could be wrong. It's actually a, the wattle and daub, or maybe even just wattle and plaster, is sort of coming back into popularity. And so is plaster, and it's for the same reason. It's pretty much infinitely recyclable. If it falls off, you can grind it up, add water, and reapply it. Lime plaster can be reused multiple times. It just needs the water to reactivate its hold. And so with today's movement of trying to you know, build more green, it's sort of coming back into favor. Now the interior of the Hall House, um, some of the rooms may have had floors on the first floor, like the family parlor I'm working on now, which has stone, but some, like the Hall, may not have had any floor at all, or the front entry passage, that may not have had a floor either. It may have just been dirt, or some stones, or whatever may have just been there. And, and some of the interior partitions um, in wealthier families may have had wood paneling. Um, it was sort of this 
in vogue way of finishing out your walls at the time. They didn't have wallpaper, they had wood paneling. You see that again later on yeah, with Tudor style. So in the entry passage, off to one side, there is like a buttery, buttery and a pantry. And that would have been where the food storage occurred. And then opposite of that, through an opening in that entry passage would have been our two-story hall. And this is where pretty much all the events of the house took place. At the end of the day, the owner's family and their employees and their families would get together in the hall and have dinner and have some social time. The owner and his family would be seated up on this dais where the table and chairs are. And that is believed by some to be the root of the term chairman of the board because those were the only chairs and they ate at a table that was made of a board. And in the rest of the hall, all, everyone else may have had stools, may have had benches, or may have just sat on the ground. And in the center of the hall would have been the fire that created all that smoke that had to escape through the windows. It's where they would have cooked their meals. And at the end of the day, the farmer and his family would excuse themselves to the private part of the house and everybody else would just sort of talk, you know, batten down in the hall for the night. They would cover the fire so no sparks could burn or ignite anything in the middle of the night. They would board up the windows to protect them from the evil that's outside. There very well may have been. They would also have bolted the doors for the same reason. Communal living back then wasn't just about the economics, it was also about safety after all. And then the occupants of the hall would hit the hay, very literally. They would fill sacks with hay and they would sleep on them, gathered around that covered fire for warmth. Meanwhile, the farmer and his family in their private wing uh, would sleep in far more accommodating environment, which we will get to shortly. Right now I'm building that buttery and pantry this is where all their food storage would have been. <laughs> there would have been a room above this, but none of my sources could agree on what that room was. It may have been another sleeping chamber, it may have been more storage, or it may have been a workspace. I mean, if you're dealing with a country that has a pretty long winter, you may want some interior workspace for things like weaving or woodworking, and this would have been an excellent room for that. So that's in the end, ultimately, what I turn it into. Basically an interior workspace. Over on the other side, I created a sitting room for the farmer and his family on the first floor. And then on the second floor, it would have been what they would have called a solar, which to us is a bedroom. Now, beds were an expensive thing. And it was the kind of thing you really hoped you'd inherit from somebody because they could represent nearly a third of your wealth or more. And so you always just sort of hoped you inherited one rather than have to expend that much money of your, of your own money yourself. But regardless, you would have had to have something and the farmer and his wife would have had curtains. This would not just have been for warmth, but also would have allowed them their only privacy available because in this room upstairs was not just them sleeping, it was their children, it was any other family members, it was even their personal servants. So the curtains were necessary for the married couple to have privacy. And the rest of the family would have slept up here on beds that were either trundle or truckle beds, depending on where you're from. Basically beds that could easily be packed up and put away or pulled out quickly. Because that would have been a room that during the day would also have been used for working things like weaving or what have you. We're gonna start looking at the exterior. Now, this was a time you weren't really all that bothered with how the exterior of your house looked. You didn't really have to worry about a manicured lawn or front flower beds. No one had time for that. You either were working in the fields, or you were working in the house, 
or you were having dinner and socializing, or you were in prayer, or you were asleep. And that was really it. No one had time to keep a perfectly manicured lawn. And so, I made sure it didn't have one. Grass is, after all, very naturally very long. There's no such thing as a naturally short grass. Uh, it's, it is a plant. It will keep growing if you let it. And they would have. If it wasn't, you know, land that was being used for farming, this was not land they were going to be bothering me, you know, maintaining. This was a time period where you were more concerned with your literal survival than whether you had the greenest lawn in the neighborhood. And this obviously would not have been the extent of their farm. This is actually quite a small plot of land for farming. The farm fields would have been much, much larger, but limitations of sin's lot sizes, what can you do? And there would have been some level of exterior bathroom facilities, although it certainly not would have been what we would have expected. You know, some kind of outhouse. Far more likely there may have just kind of been a pit with a board over it. Um, they may not have even invested in a shelter over said pit with board. It would have varied from home to home. That obviously would change later on as outhouses became more regular. So there you have it, the medieval hall house. A chance for you and your co-workers to all live together in harmony. Boarding yourself up inside at night to protect yourselves from the witches and the devils and the demons that rode the forest. Not to mention the thieves and brigands who were actual threats. So thanks for joining me this week as we looked at the medieval hall house. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments section if you had any questions or if there's anything you'd like me to, to see me build. You can find me on the Sims 4 gallery where I post playable versions of this build and others, or on Instagram at Simming History where I post teasers for next week's episode. So, until then, see you next week everybody. Bye!